This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. So, that last video was pretty, uh, tense. But you know, I liked that look for me, so I decided that I'm going to be making a political take once for every video that I do from now on. For example, today's take is, and I don't care if this offends anybody, I know it's controversial, but I didn't want to have to be the one to say it, but I will be a martyr for this issue. Lola Bunny had cake in Space Jam. Alright, I'm sorry. Had to be said. I don't want to have to be the martyr for this issue, but if someone needs to fill that role, I will be. Anyways. No, this video is not about Ben Simmons specifically, as the title should probably indicate. This video is about players in the NBA who cannot shoot, like, at all. I mean, they can physically shoot a basketball, but that's about the nicest thing you can say about these guys is shooting. I became an NBA fan in 2013, which means I came in at just the right time to see the transition into the three-point revolution that came with the emergence of the Golden State Warriors. And as that revolution has happened, shooting went from something that was nice, but not essential, to pretty much a requirement to win. If your team can't shoot the ball at at least an average level, your team will not win a championship. So at this point, it's undeniable that shooting is an essential part of the game. I would argue that when it comes to scouting players, the first thing you should really look at is their jump shot. They don't necessarily need to be a good shooter at the moment, but if they show no potential at least to be a good shooter, that's a big red flag. But while shooting is very important, to a team as a whole, when it comes down to just an individual player or a guy that has potential to be a superstar or is a superstar, how essential is it that that player can shoot? The question is, can a superstar player succeed in the NBA without a good jump shot? Before we run the late ass intro, I want to real quick mention this video's sponsor, CatBeast. CatBeast.com is a great website to make custom embroidered hats, so if that's something that interests you, make sure to check out CatBeast.com. It will be the top link in the description and it will be in the pinned comment below. I want to clarify something. What I mean by successful is win a championship, specifically without a jump shot, and while still being a dominant player. No, the rest of the team made up for it bullshit. And the reason that I started asking this question is how Giannis performed versus the Raptors in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. For a quick refresher, the Raptors essentially put a wall between Giannis and the basket, and with Eric Bledsoe and Middleton not able to hit shots to save their lives, they were able to essentially shut down Giannis. He ended up averaging just 23 points on 45% shooting, as opposed to his regular season averages of 28 on 58% shooting. I blame a lot of this loss on Mike Budenholzer and his incredibly uncreative offensive game plan. He was just trying to get Giannis in the paint with no creative way of getting him there. No pick and rolls, no post-ups, did a poor job with rotations in regards to shooting. I think Mike Budenholzer deserves way more criticism for that series. But anyways, the reason the Raptors were able to be successful with this strategy is the fact that Giannis can't shoot the ball very well. His lack of shooting was the main reason the Bucks were not in the finals. There were many other factors, as I said, uncreative coaching and poor shooting from Bledsoe and Middleton, but if Giannis was a decent shooter, he would have been able to punish the Raptors' defense for that. So this would indicate that shooting is pretty damn important for winning in 2019. Another example would be how Ben Simmons performed versus the Boston Celtics in 2018. The Celtics defenders were backing up on Ben Simmons, and that was the main reason that the Sixers lost to the undermanned Boston Celtics. So, so far, the evidence looks like no jump shot equals losing. The take to counter that has always been, well, when you give a guy that much space, he can use that space to get momentum going to the basket. Giannis can do it going for his signature Eurostep dunk, Ben can do it for a drive, and a guy like Zion, by that I mean Zion, 
because there's no one else like Zion. He can get momentum off of almost no space to go off of, so if you give him five feet of space to charge towards the basket, you should be screwed. But come playoff time, bad shooters are dared to shoot more, good shooters are covered more, and the game slows down significantly. Defenses toughen up. They care a lot more than they do during the regular season, and they look to exploit any weakness of their opponent. And as good as you can be, if your weakness is shooting, at a certain point you really can't exploit it for a positive. Especially if you're going up against a defense that can just wall off the paint. So no jumper at all is no bueno. But what about Giannis? because he actually was hitting some threes in that Raptors series. Obviously it wasn't enough, but that brings up the question of how good of a shooter does your star player need to be to win at the highest level? It's worth mentioning that while Giannis did shoot 33% from three and took a good amount of attempts per game, they were giving them to him. So he at least needs to be at a level where they're not just giving him wide open threes. Like if Ben Simmons had an Al Farouk Aminu level jump shot, would that be enough? Because Aminu is an okay shooter, but even he was left open a lot during the playoffs, and because of all that pressure, he actually bricked quite a few open jump shots. The main reason I'm even asking this question as a whole is Zion. There is an insane amount of hype around Zion Williamson right now, as there should be. But how far can Zion as he is right now really go? Are the idiots on Twitter who've been criticizing him for his lack of a jump shot actually going to get the last laugh? I don't actually know that. I'm fully aware that a lot of this video has just been me asking questions and talking about Lola Bunny's cake, but to me, you need to be at least an okay shooter to be a successful championship level player in the NBA at this point. Of course, there are many other factors to this that help around you. Eric Bledsoe not being your team starting point guard would definitely help. What you can definitely not do is not shoot at all. That's something that Joel Embiid, who is a poor three-point shooter but still takes them, has tried to emphasize with Ben Simmons. He's publicly said in the past that Ben needs to take them to keep the defense honest. He also needs to have the confidence to take them. The more confident that you are shooting your shot, the more likely that it is that it will go in. It's like dating. Not that my lonely ass would know. If we could actually bring it to a positive note on Zion, he has actually been willing to take three-pointer, so that's a good sign. He's taken three so far, he's made one, horribly missed one, and bricked another. Has it been pretty? Hell to the no. But he's actually taking what the defense gives him and making them at least be somewhat honest, which is important. It's one thing if you can't shoot well, that does make life easier on the defense. It's a whole nother if you don't shoot it at all. That makes it real easy on the defense. Then the defense knows while you're out there, you're just wasting clock. So the Ben Simmons approach ain't it. As of now, Giannis is easily the best shooter of all the guys that I've mentioned, and he seems pretty damn willing to take them at this point. And I think that if Bud has a more creative offensive game plan for getting Giannis the ball, as well as having some dudes actually able to hit their shots, the Bucks would have been in the finals, and more than likely have been the champions, because the Warriors did not have a good matchup for Giannis. The Raptors had Ibaka, Siakam, and Kawhi to throw at him, with Gasol in the paint. So I think his shooting was enough to get him by in that series, it was all the other factors. The fact that he's willing to take those shots will probably start to make the defense be more honest, and because of that, it will open up the paint for him more. So if Zion can get to even just that point, I think there is plenty of hope for him to still be a dominant and championship winning player. I think there's reason to believe that he can be the best player in the world at one point. Now with all that said, the answer to can you succeed as a superstar in the NBA, success equal winning a ring on your own merit, not with the assistance of others, without a jump shot? Well, not really. It's a bit of a gray area, but you definitely cannot not shoot at all, like Ben Simmons has over the last two years, and I don't think you can be Andre Roberson from three either. At least a bit below average, and I think you should be good 
And as for big men like Joel Embiid, who I already said is a poor three-point shooter, there is legitimate reason to believe you can't win a championship with your best player being a big man. That's one of the main reasons that I felt Ben Simmons needs to improve as a shooter because I'm not all too positive that you can do it with a dominant big man anymore. But that's a whole nother can of worms, so I'm not going to get into it right now. Anyways, thank you to Cat Beast once again for sponsoring the video. Like I said, go check that out in the description. That is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.